Hey everybody, it's Justin with Neely Detailing and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing of the Adventure 5M Pro and maybe I'll even do a, a couple of prints. I've also made some things in CAD so we'll see where I end up wanting to take it. However, I figured I'd go ahead and do the unboxing. This is my first 3D printer so not exactly sure what to expect other than what I've seen online. So, or on YouTube or whatever. So, let's go ahead and open this thing up. So we have some instructions and a USB stick. Get some of this packaging out of here. All right, so what's left in the packaging is this thing's really packed in there nicely. There's nothing moving around or shaking when I was moving around the box, so that's always a good sign. Let's get this out of the way. So this is plastic wrapping material. Okay, so opening up the top, there's some more foam in here. All right, so there's a bit of foam kind of all around. Power cord. A spool of filament, so 1.75 uh, PLA filament. Burnt titanium is the color. So we'll go ahead and try this out first. Before I move on to other materials. Okay, there's the extra head. So this is a 0.6. What's loaded in there standard is 0.4. So you have two different nozzle choices and some 3D printing adhesive. I believe this is for the spool on the back side of the printer, Allen wrench, some miscellaneous Allen wrenches, some screws, a screwdriver it looks like, and some other things along with, it looks like a pair of snips maybe. Yeah, so very sharp. Uh, snips. This would be good for cutting off slat or cutting off excess plastic. If it's hanging on there, I guess I'll take off the rest of the tape. Here. Patching is quite nice. Normally I'd leave this on, but I'm taking it off. Now I need to figure out how to get this foam out of here. It's a really tight squeeze. Okay, that was way more difficult than it needed to be. Behind here we have the foam. So all that packaging was to stabilize the head here. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and set this up on a table and then we'll get to assembling this thing. All right, so opening the instructions. Let's see what we have here. So it looks like we have after sales service. Let me see what we've got. Okay, so it kind of shows you what's covered and not covered under the warranty. And it's good for, looks like the extruder is not warranted. It looks like everything else is. Quick start guide. Let's go through this thing. And I probably should have read this first. All right, so it kind of shows you how to open it. Shows you all of your accessories and then it explains where everything goes. So yeah, so that little metal piece that I pulled out earlier, it is for the spool. So that's going to be connected to the back. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay. So in our little toolkit came with these screws here and so it shows it to be this way. So with the tab sticking up, so that's why we're going to insert this and there's a couple of arrows here too. So the next step, now that we have that installed, is... So it says to remove the screws in the bottom. So I guess that's by the head. And then there's two in the front side where the cover is. Spin this thing around here. There are arrows, so if you look in here, there's arrows here, in the back, and then here. 
those all need to be removed so we're going to do that and another distinguishing factor that i should probably point out is if you look that set screw is silver everything else is black so like a black anodized so if the arrows don't get you there i'd say the color of this will oops i thought it was a set screw it's actually a screw it's a screw screw and i'd recommend using the long side of the wrench to loosen these screws up And what I mean by long side is long side there. All right, two to go. So these screws are only in there for transportation purposes. So it's to keep the bed locked down. Okay, got it. All right, so the next thing that needs to happen is I need to plug this thing in. So. Here's the power cord, came in there came with all the accessories. Okay, and it plugs in back here. Okay, so now we're all plugged in. So it says to connect the power, turn on the power switch and press the switch button to turn on the screen. So the power switch you're talking about is right back here. I hear noise, that's a good thing. Turn it back around here. And it says turn on the power button. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, next we need to follow. It says following the guide on the screen, select the language and then select next. So English. Next. Make sure all the screws and everything are out of the way. There's nothing that's going to impede this thing moving around and I press next it should calibrate I believe just the z-axis and in case you're not aware of what the z-axis is that would be the up and down axis I'm gonna press next and let's see what happens right. so coming from a CNC background my assumption is that it's trying to hold the X and Y axis and now it's going to set the Z axis. Okay, so right now, so the bed is heating up right now. I've heard that it will probe the points on the plate while this thing is cold, but when you run it, it's hot. And so when it gets hot, it expands. So it looks like maybe this is something that they recently added, which is incredibly smart because when you're using the thing, it's gonna be hot. So let's see what happens here. But currently it's at 120 C for what the bed temperature is. For example, if I don't know how much the bed changes as far as when it grows, but if it grows too much, the head could, could potentially, on the first pass on the bottom, could come in contact with the bed. So it's going through a heat cycle. It looks like maybe you do the print nozzle, or I guess maybe the extruder nozzle, I guess you'd call it. I don't know, it's like never one of these, but I'm assuming it heated the bed up as well. Now we're home. It's going to take a series of points across this, and it'll automatically adjust when you go to print. Uh, in other words, if it's out of level, uh, the machine has enough logic after doing this to be able to compensate for any variance in the bed, uh, or the table, or the plate, or whatever you want to call it. Looks like it's doing a little shaking, so I believe it has shape compensation. So that's what it's doing right now, I believe. So vibrating vigorously. And so it looks like the first shake test was in the x axis, now it looks like it's doing it in the y axis. Okay, so now we're done with the homing procedure. Next thing we need to do is load the filament following the on-screen startup boot. A, cut off the bent part of the filament end. B, hang the filament on the spool holder, pass it through. So it shows you the direction. Click load, select PLA. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that. So when they say bent end, this is what they're talking about. And it looks like it's a bit wavy. I'm actually gonna cut off a little bit extra using the provided snips. 
now that end's cut off, then I'll put it on the back. So it says, and I already started it, it says to take this and push it through the tube until it goes all the way through. So we should be able to see it from this side here. Then I need to plug it in up top here. So it says push it forward to the feed roller until it can't go no further. <laughs> until it can't go no further. So I'm going to push it through. Let's see if I can get it go anymore. Right, so I'll close the lid. Turn the film into the feeding roller. Okay, I already did that. So I'm going to say load. All right, so now it's preheating. So as you can see right here, it's so I believe this right here would be the the extruder nozzle anyway so it's preheating that 220c okay so it's now it says it's loading the filament still a little confused why there's red in there maybe they preload that now it says loading complete clean the filament on the nozzle and platform click print so i'm gonna go ahead and clean this off somehow maybe I'm not sure if I did the right thing there, but I'm going to try it. Okay. Now I'm going to try to print. What I don't know is if it actually fed through enough. Looks like it's doing a homing sequence. Okay, Let's see what we got. There you go, 20 millimeters. Just under, so like uh, 0.05 is two thousandths. So looks like there's a little bit of taper to it. Let's see if it's consistent here. So it looks like a slightly undersized. And yeah, three to four thousandths taper. So honestly, I mean, I'm gonna have to play with this a bit and try it out on some tighter tolerance kind of parts. But uh, yeah, first impression, pretty cool. Easy to set up, easy to run, easy to use. I'm gonna go ahead and mess with this a little bit more and I will come back with more footage here shortly. I decided to go ahead and take this to the next level and created my own design in Autodesk. And this is what you're gonna see on the screen right now in time-lapse format. I will say that once you get going on this machine, and once you kind of understand it a little bit better, I would say this thing works pretty darn well. I've never owned one before, so this is a new experience for me, but I would say, you know, really it's not overly difficult to use or to understand. Also, if I missed anything in the video, please drop a comment down below. That way I can address that and I really do appreciate you stopping by, checking out the video, seeing what we've got. If you enjoy this kind of content, feel free to like and subscribe and it's very helpful. And if there's something you'd like to see, by all means, let me know. I'm happy to try things. And on that note, we're going to go ahead and cut this video off here. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you have an incredibly great day and we will see you on the next one. Take care. <laughs>